It's almost time for fantasy football, and we are gearing up this summer, mocking, drafting, looking at different analysis. And today we are joined by one of the best in the business. He's Andy Holloway. He joins us next. This is the Fantasy Football Fellowship Podcast, also being featured on the Unpacking It podcast feed as well. Our weekly Fantasy Football Fellowship Podcast takes fantasy concepts and relates them to life and faith. Look for a new episode later this week. But on today's special episode, we are joined by guest Andy Holloway to unpack fantasy, faith, and life with him before we jump in let me remind you that fantasy football fellowship is starting up and from now throughout the season we will provide weekly content we've got weekly breakouts we've got a weekly podcast and our breakouts are where we take fantasy concepts relate them to the bible relate them to life and when you sign up to be a member for free you gain access to all of our content and it is designed for you and your league to discuss and enjoy throughout the season talk a little fantasy talk a little life talk a little faith with your league so play fantasy football with purpose and grow in your faith all season long with fantasy football fellowship check out fantasyfootballfellowship.com and joining us now one of our favorite guests we've had on this show he's back after four years it's andy holloway he's one of the founders and co-hosts of the award-winning number one listen to fantasy football podcast in the world the Fantasy Footballers. It's an independent podcast that produces fantasy football content all year long. The show has now been nominated for or won more than 40 industry and podcasting awards. Be sure to check out their ultimate draft kit. I've got it. It's awesome. You can download the, the app as well and, and get great content, analysis, rankings, everything you need to win at fantasy football. It's the ultimate draft kit. Check out the fantasyfootballers.com. Andy is married. He's a father of three. He's the author of My Football Family, one of the favorites in the Johnson household. So we will talk about that today as well. Andy, it's great to have you back on Unpacking It and our Fantasy Football Fellowship podcast. How you doing? I am doing well. I cannot believe it's been four years since we chatted, but um, appreciate the introduction. Happy to be on the show. All right, man. Well, we are we are psyched about it. And, and before we jump in, the summer, of course, is it's it's fantasy time, but have you had the opportunity to to get away a little summer vacation? <laughs> What's been the highlight of the summer so far? Yeah, our family got to um I gotta take the kids up to Lake Tahoe. Nice. Uh, which was which was someplace that my wife and I visited for an anniversary trip a few years ago. And so once we had gone and seen it and experienced it, we said someday we'd take the kids back there. And um, we got the chance to do that, which was sitting by the lake, which was, you know, jet skis going out on the boat, you know, enjoying the beach, all of the good things uh, that Lake Tahoe represented. So we got a week away. Uh, it took it took the three of us on the show like, I don't know, a good seven years to realize we should schedule vacations at the same time and then just pre-record those shows. We were always like competing for certain weeks of the year. So the other two would do the show. And one of us would get out of town with the family. We finally wisened up. It took forever. And we all got out of town and got a break and kind of refreshed a little bit before we get into, you know, our busiest couple of months of the year before the season starts going. Absolutely. that That's awesome. Well, and the shows were great because I listened over the 4th of July and all that. So you were able to to drop different ones. Uh, so as far as Lake Tahoe goes and, and jet skis, it's one of my favorite things to do. But I'm curious, you have three kids. So yeah. how did you divvy it up? Were they riding on your back? What was going on? I'm I'm glad you brought this up because it was it was very, very funny. We have a a 15 year old is our oldest. And none of the rental places in Lake Tahoe will allow a 15 year old without a license to ride a jet ski by himself. But he is a he's a uh super into uh, dirt bikes and cars and that's his whole world. And so he was devastated at the thought that he's going to have to be on the back with mom or dad. But the rule in Nevada is that if you are 14 with a boating safety license, you can do that if someone will privately rent you one. So my son 
during part of the vacation was on his computer for three days getting an official boat safety <laughs> license and we were able to get somebody to drop off a couple rentals and he had the time of his life so wow. yeah the other two were very happy to be with a parent uh they are 12 and 9 and and happy to just go on the ride but yes the oldest one finally got his dream to come true and he is the proud owner of a nevada boat safety license that he will never use again but uh, um, it was pretty fun that's awesome i i love it that was about when i started riding jet skis that's a it's a blast so uh so very very we gotta cool. do more of it for sure yeah i'm with you it's been a long time actually for me but uh but very neat well you so you mentioned your your three kids at 9 12 15 what is dad life like right now how's it going it is so different from what it used to be i you know I'm adjusting. I turned 40 this year. Um, we'll probably talk a lot about life, but that has been the biggest like moment of adjustment is just my kids don't need me the way they used to need me. Um, they're growing up so fast and just the new challenges that come with having older kids. Uh, it's been really unique. I mean, it feels like it happened overnight. I know it's so cliche. It's the same thing every older parent said to us when we had little kids but it's all true, right? Like the cliches are true. So, um, it's been adjusting to just maturing kids that need us in different ways, leading them in different ways, dealing with problems that are much different than they used to be. And, and just, um, that next season of life that, that seems to be the theme. So as far as uh, you got a lot on your plate, leading a, a company with your, your two, uh, to found co yeah, yeah. co-host and all that, but but how do you balance sort of the the family life and and what have been some of the the lessons learned uh, along the way now that, that you you've been in the game with it with a fifteen year old? Yeah, I, you know I think that's always been something that uh, we've had to be ultra consistent and committed to was like prioritizing the way we want the cadence of life to go. It's a it's a daily challenge. It's something that when we started and we're, we were responsible for everything in the company, like it's become easier actually over the years just to have people that we trust, mm -hmm. employees that we trust, um, to be able to, you know, I'm very type A, like I, in the beginning, I wanted that, that firm grip of control over all these big decisions that were going to affect the brand and the growth and all these things. But, you know, God's taught me uh, over the years through experience of just being able to entrust others with great expertise. Mm. Um, and you know, we've been super blessed to find people that are not just good at their proficiency in the, in the, in the work, but you know, good human beings that have similar priority structures. So, um, we really try to, to balance that. Um, and so a lot of that has been in, in trusting others, I think, and just making sure that that's at the forefront of how we think it, it's, challenging in a seasonal business um where you have certain peak times a year but we also appreciate that seasonality because there is an ebb and flow there is a a development cycle there's a you know high intensity uh you know busy cycle for us is more before the season begins actually because all of august we're creating content daily that isn't based on games that have been played so that's the most challenging time of the year it's when we do our live show um, it's when we do press, it's when we do all of these, everything is this tight little window. So, um, you know, it's always a bit of a sprint during August, but then once the football starts, um, the content kind of creates itself and it's a lot easier to react to it. Man, that's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the middle of it. I've got a, a five-year-old and three-year-old daughter. And so, uh, so, so navigating that a little, little bit behind you, I guess, but, but the two girls, they love your book, my football oh. family. So, uh, so we've been reading that. I've really been reading it with my five-year-old last, last year or two, but, um, so tell me about the, the, just kind of how the, the idea for the book came about and it's clever. I love the, the play on words and, and it's fun. So we've read it, gosh, a lot. We've read it a lot. I almost got it memorized, but, uh, yeah, that's cool. Together? Yeah. I, I always had, um, a desire to do something in, in, in books or publishing from a young age. And so when the opportunity arose to, you know, to me, sports represents this connection point for both families, friendships, all of those things. That's what it represented as a fan growing up was like my dad and I watching Phoenix Suns games, you know, or listening on the radio. Like those were my best memories. And so, you know, in a in a in a space like fantasy football and football where sometimes there can be a subculture of like 
the, you go down in the basement and hide from the family to watch the games. Like I wanted to contribute something to the space that was more about the connection that I felt from sports and what I feel like our podcast tries to do and being more of a positive influence in that direction um, or a counterweight or whatever you want to call it. And so for me, it was an opportunity to express the best parts of sports. I think if I had gotten away with more of the editorial, I probably would have laid too many deep, <laughs> thick fantasy football references into like my original manuscript had some more um, probably sure. like keeper league stuff in there. Yeah. Yep. But uh, we had yep. to soften that down a little bit. But yeah, I, it was just a real pure passion project. You know, it wasn't something with a huge agenda to get, you know, make the book you know, the biggest thing I'm doing. It was just something that I had a, a really unique opportunity to to partner with a great illustrator and a great publisher and just put pen to paper on our experience. And, you know, they they kind of did the illustrations around our family structure. So it's like I our figured. family. Yeah. But I we I never had asked for that. It was just something okay. that the the illustrator had like when she was putting stuff together, she had just like snooped our family on Instagram or something. And so it was wow. actually really special to see our family connecting over it in this hypothetical book and world and, and, um, extending out. So really cool experience to do that. Cool to have something out there that is uh, representative of what kind of like we view the best parts of sports, which I think is, you know, sports can be amazing, right? The competition and the, and the camaraderie and the fandom and the connection, like that is what it represents to me. So, so that's a lot of what, um, inspired the book and what made me excited to, to contribute it. That's cool. It's called My Football Family. So so highly recommend it. And and the last page with the with the girl, my two daughters now they're fighting over who that is. And so they're both <laughs> they see themselves in the book. That's so, awesome. That's awesome. That's cool I, to I, hear. I, yeah. I get to be the blonde haired guy, which I guess is you at the end. Yeah, so. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's fun. Well, so as far as because that's an interesting concept, we talked a little bit about that when you you came on last time. But the idea, because I'm guilty of this, to go down to my basement and watch football on Sunday, and in some ways I've negotiated. That's my time. I get three hours every week to to at least watch the the one o'clock East Coast games. But but for you, what does football Sunday look like? And 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 you know you're in multiple leagues. And you got, you know, we're all, we're all this way as fantasy managers, you got stat tracker, you got everything else. What, what is your strategy? What are you looking at? What are you keeping up with on Sundays? Yeah. Sunday is wild. I mean, it, it, we always laugh because we've been doing this for, this will be our 10th season. And we have a, a, like a, our front lobby has got like nine TVs up and, and, and so we have Sunday ticket and we'll put on every game and we always marvel at how exhausted we are <laughs> having sat in a chair. <laughs> for however many hours to go through both okay. you feel the same way yeah like Absolutely. there is a uh, even the first 10 minutes of the day when the ball gets kicked off and there's all these games going there's this like 10 minute acclimation to the overstimulus of like where am i where am i looking how do i oh, yeah. did he do that okay i'm calling this one out like there is that whole um like overstimulation that happens and then you didn't do anything physical but then i'm going home and i'm going all right, I guess I'm glad it's over for the day and I'm tired and um, I didn't do anything. I might have ate ice cream while I watched these games, but I'm like overstimulated. But, you know, for our family, being out here in Arizona, the games start pretty early. Uh, we're fortunate where we have um, a church that has like an 830 service. So I'm able to like go with the family, nice. and, which is uh, that's always been hard to navigate, but be able to kind of go to that service, um, head out to the studio taking all the games and um you know sometimes my middle son he's the bigger sports fan sometimes he'll come with me and and mike has a a son the same age so they'll play football in the parking lot and watch games and play football and and so uh and we'll do bigger events bigger games here at the studio but but yeah i mean it, it it's something we have to do we're talking about it the next morning but taking all of that input in for so long it's like exhilarating and fun and exhausting and if the day goes well for your teams, you have a different emotional state. And, and so it's a, it's a balancing act. A absolutely. Well, a couple of things. So on, on one end, I've gotten to the point where I'm not necessarily riding every reception and I'm up one point, I'm down one point. I find after 20 years of playing fantasy, I was like, all right, I can't, I'll look at a little bit later. I'm just trying to watch the games. Where are you? Where are you? I imagine that you've got to be in a similar spot. Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely adjusted more to that side of less holding it in front of your face and watching every matchup and game. If there's something tremendous on the line, 
um, the playoffs and stuff, it's harder to resist that temptation. True, for sure. You are you are rooting so granularly for everything. <laughs> um, but with the show too, we're like we're rooting for our teams. We're also rooting for our advice to be successful for our listeners. That's right. Um, and and maybe that even, I mean, that is definitely taking the priority over our own teams. But, <laughs> but we also are hyper competitive, so it's a balance there. Where, you know, the last thing I want to do is go out and make a prediction, which is you know, it's a prediction and have it fall in its face and let people down. Like we we wear that a lot, you know, starts of the week and stuff. So um, we are able now, I think, to sit back and not check the scores as often, but let it all come to us, take a breath. But uh, it's fun. It, you know, you, you kind of, you get burnt out at the end of the year mm. and you're like, I'm so glad it's over. Yep. But then you get to this stage in July and the documentaries are coming out and things are coming out. And I'm like, I'm ready for it to be back. Like every year we get to that point where you're like, this is something special. Is it different than all the other sports? And I'm ready for it to come back. Absolutely. I'm, I'm right there with you. And, and I, I want to ask you more about the, the, the need to be right. We we talk about that in a, <laughs> in a, in a, in a little bit, yeah. but, but going, going back to Sundays. So you're able to go to church. I have to imagine though, it's challenging for you to go to church because everybody is coming up to you. Saying, hey, Andy, who do I start? Who do I start? How does it's, that go for you? Yeah. I mean, it, it is a natural byproduct of the job that we do. And I'll admit it is probably not the thing I always want to talk about, but it's something that other people want to talk about, but no, it, it's, it's fun. And, um, it is, it's always been a challenge on Sundays in season since we started the job. It's just like a natural byproduct of this day that you want to be able to set aside and you can't, um, even if you decide you're going to miss time and miss games or, or whatever the case may be, it's still in the back of your mind. It's still something that that's on your mind. So, um, I feel like that's a weekly challenge for 10 years that I've had of just, can I put the phone away? Can I not pay attention to the news that's breaking in? Like there was a time a long time ago, that wasn't an option, right? And now the phone's in your pocket, the watch, oh, this guy's injured. It's like, that's a, that's a big challenge, but we're, we're, um, navigating it year by year. <laughs> that's it. No, it is. And I, I, I feel it too, you know, tr trying to be in the, in the moment in worship and you get the buzz and you, yeah, right? I mean, it's, is that a breaking news? Is my starting running back out today? What's going on? Yeah, so, it's, it is, it is. That's, that's the challenge we all, we all face. Well, speaking of, of church and, and we'll talk a little faith with you too, and we'll, we'll get back to some fantasy conversation as, as well. But just as far as you know, this season of your life, and you mentioned a little bit from the from the dad perspective, what in what ways has your faith been challenged, and in what ways is your faith growing right now? Yeah, I, you know, I it's hard to not weave that into our parenthood journey, just with kids at the stages of life that they are, and how important the family life is to us, and and being able to lead in a way that is. Um, you know, faithful and responsible and, and watching kids develop their own personalities and their own faith and their own journey. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely interwoven. I think there's been this season in my life of aging and not having my identity wrapped up in being young, I guess would be a way to put it. Like it's strange how much I realize being an entrepreneur and having success in business and things like that was wrapped up into my identity at a, as being a young person doing that and having success with that. Um, not something I, I would probably would have ever said out loud or acknowledged as like true until I've realized, you know, you get older and you're no longer living in this state of what your potential is, but more like acceptance of where you are in life and where um, your family is and where things, you know, my own parents and just, it's just a very interesting time of life to to live out and 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 the older you get the more that you have a temptation to romanticize parts of your youth as well i think uh, especially when it comes to faith and you know i became a, a believer in my late teens and i have like a lot of incredible fond memories of being you know before i was married before i had kids where this was all I was contributing my life to. And the older you get, you kind of romanticize the simplicity of those times. Mm. Um, and that can kind of, I think, cause um, sort of a paralyzation in where you are now, right? Like if you're always looking backwards, 
you're not living presently in the way that you want to live. So I think some of those challenges have, have, uh, or, you know, opportunities to grow have presented themselves and accepting being 40 years old, having our kids as old as they are saying goodbye to the days that you're living with five and three year olds that I, you know, I, we all got the apps on our phone, right. That show us the, uh, what happened in the past, you know, the flashback apps. And, um, I see those and my wife makes fun of me because I I sit around and I listen to Ben Rector nostalgia music yeah. while I'm while I'm like watching pictures of our kids. And it's like uh, she makes she makes fun of me so much because like my uh, Spotify um, release radar that comes out every week is like they'll just like Spotify. will just find nostalgia songs to throw into my playlist and she'll mock me because she'll get in the car and that's all they are. That's so I, I, I don't know. I think that that is just um, top of the head just dealing with. Uh, growing older and accepting the stage of life that you're in. Um, and at the same time, even with the business, like you, we were a young, small, throwing my pin around here, a young, small business that, you know, you're scrappy and you're in the upstairs bedroom and you're, you know, everything is is new and exciting and you're a startup. And then now we're 10 years old, right? And we're, we've matured as a business. And so the, there's different, uh, there's change. Is that the good summary of it all? Change? There it is. That's it. And yeah, no, that's, that's, that's huge. And, and so along those lines too, you, you use the word identity and, and I was thinking too, the, the word idol, uh, I was reading first John today and at the end of it says, don't, don't, uh, embrace idolatry, but the, uh, the concept of fantasy football, it's yeah. such a wonderful thing. I love it. It's great. Yeah. But just like we were joking about, even at you're a church and you're worshiping and it's like, wait, I'm worried about my fantasy team. How have you uh, navigated and wrestled with the concept of fantasy football, for one, becoming an idol, becoming the main focus, becoming the priority of life, but then also success and growing a business and, and, and all that you guys have experienced and the rise in the, in the fantasy world, in the podcast world, to the heights that you've gone to? How, how do you stay grounded in, in the midst of all that? Yeah, I, I think that... Um... I think it's super challenging. I don't. I don't think I've ever been in, in a position where fantasy football itself has has tempted, you know, ha, has brought itself to that place of of being the potential idol. Uh, I don't think I like it that much. I really don't. Um, but I. But I think that the business, the the success of the business, um, the routine of the business, those things can elevate themselves into that identity structure, and. Um, and just who you are and what you do. Uh, and those things um, can be a daily challenge to make sure that you are um, focused on the right thing and not uh, associating the routine with your identity. And it's just really, really challenging because I have, I take a great deal of pride in what we do. We provide for our employees. I take a great deal of pride in that. Um, but also just, you know, we all have a certain amount of hours in the day. Um, we all have a certain amount of brain space to commit to certain things. And, and so you have to be super intentional about saying no to a lot mentally, emotionally, and then pragmatically with the business, I think to have any chance up against the kind of tidal wave of success or whatever that is defined as in your life. Right. Like I kind of think of, um, I guess first, first Timothy six talks about like taking hold, uh, and it's talking to those rich in the present age, but about like taking hold of that, which is truly life. Mm. And so there's the illusion that, that everything that we're doing in this world is truly life and it's not right. It's temporary. And so I think that, that verse and that kind of mindset has been very present in my head for a long time about like, am I getting sucked into this thing that isn't really life? Um, and, or am I investing in that which doesn't spoil and is truly life, as as the, the verse says? So, um, yeah, it, it's not going to happen on, by accident. You're not going to organically, naturally um, trend towards that which is truly life. You're going to trend the other direction, right? True. And so... Um, you know, and you have a lot more influences if you grow as a business, right? whether it's, you know, people that want you to do this, that, or the other thing for the success of the business. And so I'm very thankful. I think the greatest or the greatest asset that we have is the united worldview of the three of us when it comes to how we function in a business. It would be 
I would say nearly impossible if there was a division at the leadership level of our company in terms of this is what I want out of this business. My net out of this business is this. And then mine is over here like that. There's no way for those diverting directions to convene in the right place. Mm. And I've been a part of businesses like that, mm. you know, not as an owner, but as those that wit as somebody who witnessed multiple owners of a business with completely different worldviews and outcomes that they wanted. And it just, it disintegrated like it was a success and then it disintegrated over time. So um, being on your guard about that and, and um, kind of having those resets as often as possible is the best layman's advice I can give. I mean, I have no answers. I have no perfect explanation <laughs> no, on how to do that. Cause I'm still trying to learn myself. That's right. I'm, I'm right there with you for sure. And, and just from a, a day to day, week to week basis, as far as, remaining grounded in your faith? What are the spiritual kind of disciplines, practices that, that are important to, to your growth and, and following Jesus and, and, you know, remaining close and, and in sync with him? Yeah. I mean, I think, it, I think, um, I mean, I can go, you, you've got the quick cliche answers of like being in the word and, and that's not, I mean, that should be the answer, but at the same time, I think what has helped a lot is having some deep friendships with people, whether it's in our church community or people growing up that, you know, you can go and have conversations about these things with that have uh, spiritual wisdom to impart, um, counsel to give coming from the same place. Um, I think that's been the most fundamental help to me is having, you know, uh, close friendships with, you know, former pastor that I can meet with on a regular basis. They can give me perspective. Somebody that is, you know, further along in their life as a parent has been so invaluable to us that have, have gone through the teenage years as we enter them with our kids. Um, and can speak wisdom into our lives from both experience and the scripture. So, um, you know, I think regular practice is there and not pulling away from, from people that, that are going to tell you the truth and not just tell you you're doing really good and this is really cool. And that's, you know, I think that's so valuable. Love it. Absolutely. No, no question. And, and you, you mentioned your, your business partners, of course, the co-hosts on the show, Mike and Jason, and you, know, you guys are friends and also business partners and and I'm curious the importance of intentionally remaining friends investing in the friendship while also experiencing growth in business and challenges and excitement uh, you know along the way through that lens as well what have you learned from that now as we celebrate <laughs> 10 years of of the fantasy footballers yeah I mean it is um I mean I love those guys and I think we did more life together five six years ago when our kids were little and it was like play dates. And now we've got kids that are in sports and then, you know, Jason's kids are in theater and Mike's are in football. And like, so we don't, we probably don't see each other as often out of the studio as we used to, but the fondness for one another and the care for one another and empathy towards uh, what the other people are experiencing. Like it's always been that, um, you know, if two people on, are on board for something important, but the other one is unsettled about it or doesn't feel comfortable, we're going to side with that person. We want that unanimous um, moving forward together. So, um, you know, that's a big deal. That's the, a big deal. That's yeah, it, it is. And, and um, I'm so thankful for it. Like it's, I don't take it for granted at all. And I can't, you know, I think any of us would the shirt off our back type of thing for one another and for our employees here who have, who have been so incredible. So I'm a big believer in the the unity and unanimous as well. And I got good advice years ago because I, mm. I run a ministry and so I have a board of directors. Yeah. And, and in order for us to move forward and make big decisions, I long for the the unity of the board. Yeah. That it's, not, it's not a five to four vote. Right. No, no, we got to all be on, on board here. Um, and especially as we you know, serve the same Lord, it's like, hey, if the Lord's leading us a direction, it should be the same direction. Otherwise, right. we'll up in here. So. Yeah. And it, it is such peace of mind when you can have that. And it doesn't mean that every decision goes that way. Right. But sometimes you just, you know, no or not yet have, have been the most important answers, not the yeses. Right. Like we've had lots of opportunities as a business over the years, the no's, the not yet, the maybe laters, the let's take our time. Those have been the most valuable steps towards um, having success or an influence. Great. So you, you celebrate 10 years and I saw you, you posted on, on LinkedIn right. a, a few months ago, uh, six kind of takeaways. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'll put you on the spot here, but, uh, a couple of the things that jumped out to me, one, you said add value and stay humble. So, so what, what does that mean? And how have you been able to, to stay humble through, through all of this? 
talking about humility in general is very difficult. <laughs> um, but I think uh, if you don't have an ambition to stay grounded, you're probably going to have more um, failure in that area than if you have that ambition and still fail sometimes. So um, I certainly do not profess perfection in that area, but I do have an ambition to remain uh, humble in the way that we speak, in the way that we talk to our listenership, the way that we view them, uh, the way that we view ourselves in terms of, you know, let's not, let's not put up a, a pretend view that we are something extraordinary, right? Just because we talk fantasy football all day long and people listen to the show. I mean, those are all things that can become trappings, I suppose. So I, I just think having an ambition to, to view what we do, why we do it. And the people we're talking to the exact same way that we did on day one is just like a good place to start for our show um, and try to have that ambition. So, I mean, I mean, it's as simple as that for me. And um, I don't know if we do it well all the time, but that's oh, the yeah. ambition, you know? No, it's, a, it's an enjoyable listen. And yeah, you guys aren't, it's not, look how great I am. Look at all that I know. And I also listen to other fantasy radio and there's plenty of that out there. So you get, you get some, of we that. had experienced a lot of that, to be honest, we, you know, even our like DFS side projects with, um, the other guys that we employ, it's like DFS for the rest of us. So like we had a, we had experienced talk radio that was like, how dare you ask that question? How stupid is that question that you asked? Like that was something that we had called into shows and received. So I think we were very, uh, diametrically opposed to that kind of a mindset and hopefully we can, hopefully we are representing the other side that's right and I, I think that's why so many people listen and and along those lines you, you brought it up earlier and I, I was going to bring it up again the desire to be right so you want to remain humble and, yeah oh yeah you we know, don't have all the answers and but, take your victory laps right <laughs> but you also you want to be right you want to nail the the breakouts the sleepers the you know the the top picks and and so and you also yes. want to be right compared to your other two buddies there's I was going to say it is um it is competitive, and so that's a part of it. I think being right in their faces is a fun, enjoyable, <laughs> with your friends type of thing. The closer the friend, the more it's enjoyable. Yes, yes. And we are, you know, the show would not be the same if we didn't want to rub each other's noses in their rights and wrongs. <laughs> but at the same time, it's also not wanting to be embarrassed. I think that that that's a part of it too, right? Like part of it is do what what do I want more? Do I want to like be right more or do I want to not be embarrassed more? Or what what's the middle ground there? Like I, you know, I think that's is both sides of the coin. Yeah. It, well, so you guys are competitive just as you're talking about certain players and all that. Yeah. You're, also, you're also in the same at least one league together. How many different yeah. leagues are you guys in together? Where you're actually all competing? the ones we care about. Yeah, okay. all the ones we care about where we're sharing those leagues together. We're competitive. We're competitive out of fantasy football. If we're playing pickleball or we used to play in flag football leagues or we play shuffleboard or we play, you know, whatever we do, ping pong, um, we're going to just cornhole. Oh my gosh. We had multi-year Christmas party with the company cornhole competitions where uh, yeah. they were very enjoyable and exciting and fun and left just it, thankfully not broadcast onto YouTube. Ah, uh, uh, probably for the best. Yeah, That's pretty good. So, of the leagues that you were in last year, how many did did you win? Any of them that were, that you with those two guys? Last year, I won the league of record. So that yeah. was the first time in ten years. So I, had, you know, it had been a while. I had had like mm -hmm. multiple championship game losses. That's a bad feeling. Oh, now, last year, Mike won the dynasty league. He beat me in the dynasty league final, and I won our league of record for the first time in a while. And then Jason won nothing. And you love that. That's great. And and so there you go. And yeah. that's what it is. That's awesome. No, that that that's fun. Well, all right. Let's we'll 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 talk a little bit uh, more fantasy. I still got to ask you maybe a, a player or two that we got to keep an eye out for. Of course, as we listen to your podcast each uh, week, but also coming up every day. So what what day does that start when, when you're on every day? August first. Yeah, August, August first. Okay. We'll start every day until the end of the football season. Yes. Then we'll then we'll really lock in. So I. I usually get you about once a week because I mow the lawn once a week. So I'm, uh, that's, that's my my time to listen to podcasts. There you go. Yeah, is, is mowing. Uh, so in the summer, I'm, I'm got to put more grass in, and you can that's, maybe catch us a couple of days. Well, I, I still do the push mower, so it takes me you know a decent okay. amount. 
Okay. Right now, get, a, get the full show in. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, but I'm curious, you know, we talked about 10 years. You guys have been a part of the fantasy football industry. Yeah. And it's probably a full podcast, but just some high level takeaways. In what ways have you seen the positives of fantasy football, the growth, the change, and, and just sort of you as you project the future of the fantasy football community, culture, industry, what are maybe some of the concerns? Positives, negatives, where do you stand? Yeah, I I mean it's a it's a big broad question. It's changed a lot. Content creation has changed tremendously. The barrier to entry in that space has changed tremendously. So, you know, when we first came in, we thought we were late. It's funny. It's 10 years. We thought we were late. It's, you know, it was the big players. It was CBS and ESPN and, and they had prominent, you know, shows, but there weren't a lot of smaller shows. There wasn't Instagram reels and TikTok and, you know, YouTube content. And so accessibility of content, there's no shortage of content in fantasy football. So um, that's been a dramatic change since the time that we began. We also began in a time in which the DFS and sports betting landscape was non-existent, or if it was, it was unregulated, and we didn't really, you know, even touch the outskirts of that space because of the lack of regulation and protections for consumers. And so um, there were like a bunch of companies that were doing unregulated stuff in the space, and then uh, the, the the governor started shutting down sports betting and and so every all those companies lost their money and they they went out of business and they didn't exist and the regulation came and so the translation of all of that through the fantasy space has been interesting it's been a i think a financial driver for a lot of startups and different companies to get off the ground with uh whether it's dfs or best ball or some of the you know different regulated sports uh areas so that's been an interesting thing to watch um mostly from the sidelines, but also like talking to other like-minded uh, professionals in the industry and what they see happening and how they're adjusting to it. So, you know, technology has changed, um, which has allowed more complicated gaming. You know, it's not like I grew up playing fantasy football with a newspaper or, you know, with touchdown only leagues, you have tons of different platforms and software to, you know, be able to track your league or have complicated rule sets. So those things have made, you know, uh, aiming your content at the right kind of space a little bit more difficult, I think, because everybody likes a different thing. But those are kind of the high level things that I think I've noticed the most over the last handful of years is just the amount of creators entering the space, the type of content, the platforms, and then the sports betting regulation side. It, it's interesting. Yeah, that there's a there's a lot of layers there. And yeah. I'm, I'm curious your thoughts too, because you guys focus mainly on redraft. Normal, yeah, yeah, redraft season long, which is yep. great. And that's that's my favorite. I, yep. I love that. I will say though, I'm a huge auction guy. And yep. why don't you think auction drafts are more prominent? They're gaining a little steam, but why aren't they as prominent? They aren't as prominent for a couple of reasons. Uh I can make the jovial comment of just like auction drafts take an eternity and i think that there's a part of that that's true people draft online like it's a harder mechanism to, to navigate but you yeah, don't you like lock in the whole time but that's not the main reason i think the main reason is because it, it 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 separates casuals from sharks to a greater degree and very because true. of that it's not as prominent because it's very easy to invite somebody to a quick redraft league or a church league or a family league everybody's kind of on the same playing field. You can go grab a cheat sheet. Um, I know you could do that with an auction league, but the, the mechanism of really making those decisions is a lot harder than following a cheat sheet. It is, it's, it's a, a more advanced strategy. It's how I'm on a, am I, am I, you know, going big players and, and scrubs, you know, I think that there's just a little bit more of a learning curve. So it hasn't become as mainstream, but the auction people are, enthusiastic and hardcore it's just a smaller amount so i mean we get that question for 10 years it's like why don't you talk more auction why don't yeah. you talk more you know dynasty and you know we're kind of an everyman show and we feel like the advice we give on players holistically will help people in dynasty and auction but if we gave specific dynasty and auction advice all the time it would not help people in redraft so it's a tough thing we try to have special days when we might do a a dynasty week or auction articles but it's it's a tough balance to please everybody in that way but those are the reasons i think i don't know if you agree yeah i i think in some ways it people are just used to doing the snake drafts and and yeah 
people don't like change. They probably so, don't even know. Yeah. I mean, there are people that stay in touchdown leagues because <laughs> it's how they've always done them. It it's hard to get over that. Like just re-roll the exact same thing. And I get it. I mean, I've, our league's like 17 years old and, um, you know, getting somebody to get rid of kickers was like an obstacle that was very difficult to overcome. Oh yeah. We got rid of kickers a number of years ago. And I, I always laugh at people that tell me, Oh yeah, we still have kickers. What are you doing? Come on. I know. We don't even know their names anymore. And we're no. proud of that. That'd be same with me. Same yeah. with me. I'm right there with you. All right. La last thing we'll, we'll, we'll get to. And, and, and again, you can hear more of Andy's takes on his uh, normal podcast, the fancy footballers. So, so check it out, but I'll just ask this question. What players are you most excited? We're in the middle of July. Who are you most excited to draft? Of course, you'll have your, 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 my guys, uh, episode in, in a few weeks, but uh, but right now, give us a little teaser on some guys that excite you. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably say a different name than I'm, I've been saying on the show just to, to make it different, but like I couldn't, and it's a Homer thing, but I don't think it is. Like the Marvin Harrison Jr. experience this year is going to be extraordinary. Like, um, this is a this is a pro, this is a pro coming You're into a the Cardinals league. Fan. You're a Cardinals fan, and I'm a Cardinals fan. fan. Sorry, yes. So I am I'm invested in, in the next Larry Fitzgerald, we hope, in Arizona. I'm just, I'm really excited because I think this is the highest drafted rookie that we've seen in terms of fantasy draft spot. And then obviously very high in the NFL draft. So I'm so excited to see what happens with him. You know, there are some, some other players that like I keep bringing up on the show, like Calvin Ridley in Tennessee, who uh, everything we do on our podcast, just so people understand, it's like, it's liking a player, but it's liking a player based on where they're going in fantasy drafts. It's not just, I think they're going to have a good season. I, there are a lot of players that I think are amazing and going to have a good season and won't end up on my fantasy team because they're too expensive, right? And that happens a lot of the time. Like Sam Laporte is an awesome tight end in, in Detroit, but his draft cost is so high that he won't end up on my team. That's what Cal, Calvin really is the inverse of that. I think he's going too far away in drafts. People are ignoring him. They think he's too old. They don't like uh, Will Levis. So he's a player that's on that list for sure that I think We'll probably end up on my guy. Spoiler alert. We'll probably end up on a lot of my teams if his draft position doesn't go higher. Um, so those are a couple names that I'm really excited about at the wide receiver position. Very cool. Actually, I listened back to the time we had you on four years ago. You liked Calvin Ridley then? So Did I really? Yeah. That would have been Atlanta, right? That would have been Atlanta. Was he a rookie? He wasn't a rookie. It was early. It yeah. probably was his second year, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone really? was expecting big things. I think he got hurt. That, I think that, he got that, hurt. That but. year, yeah. So there well, that's funny. I that there you go. Four <laughs> years later, maybe I need to let go of this guy. My goodness, Man, that's your guy. That's your guy. <laughs> Apparently, fair that's enough. Yeah. Well, Andy, man, so great to have you on, and and really fun to catch up with you. And and congrats on ten years as a as a listener. For gosh, I've been listening a long time. So uh, excited for you thank guys, you. and and thank you. Thankful that uh, you're willing to come on and talk a little faith and life. And so uh, enjoy the. Fun. The next couple months yeah thanks for doing what you're doing and integrating um you know something that's our passion here fantasy football with uh, the fellowship aspect i think you know we brought it up earlier community and connection like there are a lot of people that are in my life because of fantasy football still you know what i mean from school or for wherever so it is a good opportunity to get people together and and what you're doing to uh unite faith and, and fantasy is awesome thank you no we appreciate that andy well man We'll do it again. Wish you the best. He's Andy Holloway from the Fantasy Footballers, thefantasyfootballers.com, anywhere podcasts are found. You got them. So uh, enjoy and listen to them, and we appreciate uh, what they do. So glad to have them on today. All right, I'm Bryce. I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected, and through faith, I've been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well. And I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. Have a great rest of your day. Be sure to check out fantasyfootballfellowship.com. Check out unpackingit.com. And we'll talk to you next time right here on the Unpacking It podcast and also the Fantasy Football Fellowship podcast. Special episode today. Thanks for being with us.